Hey guys, Matt Dancho here, and today I'm going to share with you how to make your first data analysis agent with Python and generative AI. And this is my first tip that's part of my new newsletter, AI slash ML tips. And our goal here today is to create a data analysis agent that can answer questions about a data set. So you give it any data set you want, and it's going to answer those questions. It's going to use OpenAI to interact with the data. Here's just a snapshot of the code that we're going to walk through today. We're going to create this AI agent, and then we're going to run it or invoke it. And then what we're going to do is return that text and post-process it, convert it to a data frame, and then make a visualization with that data frame. So let's dive in. Um, I'm going to actually switch over to the Python script. So I'm here in my O1 data analysis agents. I'm going to be working off of this. There's also a Jupyter notebook. I've converted this over to a Jupyter notebook for those who like Jupyter. Um, and if you want the access to these, make sure you join my newsletter. You get access to everything here. So not just this tip, but also other tips. And I have more coming, one a week. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna run some of the libraries. So I'm gonna hit shift and enter here. And what I'm doing is I'm connecting to my Python stack. If I open this up, you can see I'm loading in a bunch of methods. I'm going to use chat OpenAI from Langchain OpenAI. And that's gonna allow me to interface with OpenAI. So you need to have an OpenAI key. I'll talk about that, how to get the API key here in a second. The next thing is we're going to use this pre-built create pandas data frame agent. Now, normally what I would do if I'm building production code is I would actually create my own agents from scratch. But today we're gonna to use this helper function that comes from this Langchain experimental library. And then I'll explain where this agent type comes in. So we're gonna pull that method in as well. We're also gonna use a, a few other common libraries like pandas and OS, et cetera. Also, what I'm going to do here next is I'm going to run this line of code here. And what that's going to do is it's going to pull in this parse JSON to data frame function. So I'll explain why we're using that, but where that comes from is in my utils. I've created a, a quick function here called parse JSON to data frame. If I highlight this function here, you can see kind of what it does. It takes a JSON string, something that looks like this, and it parses it to a data frame. Okay. All right. Next thing. So we need to use OpenAI for this tutorial, and I'm gonna use uh, the GPT-40 Mini. So if you haven't done so yet, make sure you uh, go to OpenAI's website and get an API key. If you have any trouble with that, just use ChatGPT, it'll walk you through the instructions. But what you're gonna do is this line of code here, you'll just set up your API key. You'll paste that in here and you'll run this line. Now, I wanna keep mine secret, so I'm going to load it from a credentials.yml file that I've saved on my computer. So I'm just going to load that in. Next, shift and enter, and um, I've, I've now uh, saved it to my environment, okay? Now we're ready to do the bulk of the, the work. So we're gonna create the data, um, a file that I've created called customer data it contains a bunch of information on from customers, transactions, their date, the customer ID, geography that they were purchased in and so on, and the sales data. Okay, so we're gonna load that in first, shift and enter. Next thing that we're gonna do is, I've got that data loaded in here. Next thing that we're gonna do is, we're going to initialize the LLM. So this is the base LLM that we're going to use. Um, we're gonna use this. And this is gonna specify the key attributes of the, the LLM that we're gonna use inside of our Create Pandas Data Frame Agent. Um, if you don't wanna use chat OpenAI, if you wanna use something else, like, um, I don't know, a model from like Hugging Face, uh, like the meta, Meta's model, um, or the Llama models, or something else, you can do that here. Uh, we're gonna use OpenAI in this tutorial though. So I'm gonna use this to specify the LLM. Um, I gotta run this line up here, make sure I got my model. So this specifies the GPT-40 mini model that we're going to be running. So I'm back here, make sure I run this, um, and now it is working. So we can see here that we got the nice green check mark and we've now specified it. Okay, um, now that we have the base model and we've got some data, we can combine those in this create pandas data frame agent. And this is just kind of like a simplified, simplified way to create um, a pandas data frame agent that's gonna interact with your data frame and it's gonna know like what columns exist. And when you ask questions to, the, and we run this, the agent's sole purpose is to analyze data. 
Okay, so that's what this, this whole thing does. Um, so here's uh, what's going on under the hood. Um, if you highlight this, there's an LLM that we're gonna specify in a data frame. Those are kind of like the minimum things that we need to specify, um, but there are a few other things that I'm gonna specify as well, and I will explain what I'm doing. So the agent type, the OpenAI actually has their own functions that can be used when you call OpenAI. So I find you do sometimes get better performance when you use specifically OpenAI's variants of their uh, tools and functions. So that's what we're telling it here to do. So agent type, use OpenAI functions, which is gonna do uh, function calling. It's gonna set up an agent to do full calling. Next thing, so I added this because what happens when we run these data analysis agents is they return text. And text is great if you're you know, just trying to create a report, maybe with markdown or something like that. But inside of an application, you typically want a data frame that you want to be able to interact with. So the easiest way to get a data frame is actually to have agent return JSON. So what this suffix does, if I highlight this, there's a prefix and a suffix. And what that's gonna do, if I scroll down here, is it's going to add on to the initial AI agent's prompt. Now we don't see what that prompt is, but we can imagine it being something like you are a pandas data frame agent that takes a data frame and perform and performs pandas data manipulations on it or something like that and what suffix is going to do is then append to the end of that prompt and it's going to add in this statement always return a json dictionary that can be parsed into a data frame containing the requested information okay Verbose equals true, uh, I'll talk about that in a second. And then we have to allow what they call dangerous code. I don't really like the name of this, but what that's gonna allow it to do is basically to run the code inside of this environment, not in a sandbox environment. So uh, you have to do that because if it can't run the code, then it's not gonna be able to do your data analysis manipulations. Okay, so it's, it's just kind of like something that you need to be aware of. We're gonna set that to true. And as long as you're not like telling it to do something dangerous, like delete all of the files on my hard drive, you know, like then you're going to be okay. But just be aware of that. I and mean, that's why also we, what we want to do is when we do this in production, we want to safeguard for things like that. Okay. All right. So that's what this is showing here. The next thing that we need to do, we need to run it. So we're going to run the agent and we use this command called invoke. So we give it a question. You can imagine in an application, your business people might want to know what are the total sales by geography. So let's just check out, before I run that, let's check out the data frame one more time. So this is the data frame that the AI agent we've connected it to. And you can see that there's a geography total sales, which is going to be the price times the quantity of these different products. And these customers are, are purchasing. So you can ask it any question. Um, the question that we're going to ask it is what are the total sales by geography? Just something simple to, to test it out. So when I do this, because we have it in verbose mode, you're going to see this agent kind of iterate through and finally return the, the final response. Okay. So you can see here, uh, it's got this a dictionary that it returns input, which is the initial question, and then output, which is what we want. This is the, the output here, okay? If I pretty print the, the output, you can see it, we're actually getting text back, but it includes JSON because I've told it to turn a JSON dictionary, okay? So this is what we're gonna use that parsing function. So if you remember that custom parser that I, that I added here, that's this function parse JSON to data frame. So if you check out that parser function, this is what it's doing internally. You can check out that in the code, but really what it, it's gonna do is it's gonna take a response like this and it's gonna extract out this JSON from in here and it's gonna convert that to a data frame, okay? So let's check this out. So we've got our response output. We're gonna put that in here and then we're gonna convert that now to the response underscore data frame. And now we can see here we've got geography, east, north, south, west, and then I have the total sales for each one of those geographies. All right, and then from there, what we can do is cool stuff like visualize. Um, so this is the, the sales by geography. Um, this will make a lot better for a report. Um, and you can imagine now integrating this into like an application for your company that allows it, them to do basic data analysis if they upload a Excel file and then they're able to quickly get a visualization on, on some of the information, ask questions with natural language, okay? So this is like the where the entry point for your app would be, and then the exit or the out, out would be like a visualization like this. All right, and then real quick, the last thing, um, I do have a awesome uh, generative AI uh, data science bootcamp. 
So this is Generative AI for Data Scientists. It's an eight week live boot camp that I just started here recently and it's gotten amazing results. Um, here's what I cover in the in the eight weeks. We start off with a kickoff and then we uh, learn all the things that you need to learn with a data science spin to it. So retrieval, augmented generation, business intelligence, AI copilot, how to build one of those with SQL and pandas, tools, customer analytics agents. This is an uh, introduction to multi-agent workflows. You learn Lang graph and Lang chain time series forecasting agents. So now we're integrating machine learning into our workflows and your AI is actually gonna uh, write its own machine learning code, which is pretty pretty insane. And then we get into production, like LLM model deployments with AWS Bedrock, fine tuning and RAG deployments with AWS Bedrock, and then AI app deployment with AWS Cloud using Docker, EC2, Nginx, and uh, yeah, in production. So this thing goes full circle from learning how to build with AI to learning how to take your AI into production for enterprise grade AI. So you can enroll, just click this link here. Um, I'll also put a link in the video notes. So check that out and uh, yeah, there you go. Now you have a way to build your own data analysis agents just with this code. So definitely join the newsletter and check that out as well. All right, I'll see you soon.